say something. So we are on the air. We are on the air. We are. Good morning. How are you? As we get ready for our morning service, our Sunday morning service. Sunday morning service with Minister Sam and Reverend Sandy. We thank you all for joining us this morning. As my wife says, we love you all. So thank you for joining us. We're coming from Deltona, Florida. And this is Sunday morning glory, pre-service with Minister Sam and Reverend Sandy. Out of Deltona, we thank all of you for joining us. Welcome you all, wherever you are, wherever you may be listening to us, and no matter what part of the world or the country you're coming from, we thank you for joining us this morning. And we will do our usual, begin with a prayer. Father, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus, we come to you again on another Sunday morning to honor and praise and worship you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for just allowing us to be able to reach out and touch someone who you want us to speak to, Lord. We hope that the words that we speak will reach and touch someone that you want us to touch, someone that who's crying out for you, Lord, someone who's asking that you come into their life. We hope that the words that you have put in us and instilled in us to speak today will be able to bring light, bring someone closer to you, Father. Bring someone together with you, Father, to be with you in the next world. We know that this body is only here, we only here temporarily, but to be with you, Father, is forever and eternal. We thank you, Father, for this. We thank you, Father, for just allowing us to be able to reach and be able to touch Whatever part of the world, whatever part of the country that you want us to touch, you've given us the ability to do this, and it could not have been done without you, Father. We thank you for this blessing. We thank you, Father, for our families. We thank you, Father, especially for Bishop Scott, who speaks to us, who teaches us, who guides us, who is our beacon of light, that you have given him the message and the words to help instill in us as we go forth to speak your words and to do your will, Father. We thank you, Father, for this. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, we thank you all for joining and listening to us. Um, today we're going to stay with uh, our message with love. Uh, we're going to once again read from 1 Corinthians 13, so go get your Bibles. We'll give you an ample time to do that. Today we're going to talk about love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. That's one. And the other is love doesn't gravel when others gravel. So those are what the two topics that we're going to talk to today. So go get your Bibles, 1 Corinthians uh, we're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 13, The Way of Love. We're going to be reading from the message portion of the Bible, as we've been doing for the last few weeks. And um, we thank you for just being with us. Reverend Sandy, if you would play something for us. Crying out to you, 
Sure. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to read from 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to read the Message Bible from the Message Bible. The way of love. If I speak with human eloquency and angelic essay, but don't love, I am nothing but a creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's words with power, raveling all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I am nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burnt as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than itself. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swell head. Love doesn't force itself on others. Love isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love doesn't rabble when others gravel. Love takes pleasure in flowering of the truth. Love puts up with anything. Love trusts God always. Always looking for the best. Never looking back, but keep going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speeches will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limits. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, or incompletes will be canceled, our incompletes will be canceled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We will see all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us towards that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is to love. I just love that last part where it says, love extravagantly. Yes, I, I can see you do. <laughs> <laughs> Most cautiously. <laughs> <laughs> but um, love extravagantly. Yes, love. Love as though you've never loved before. Okay, so today we're going to talk about Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. <coughs> and we're also going to talk about love doesn't ravel when others grovel. <laughs> love doesn't keep the score of the sins of others. Wow. That, that's a mouthful in, in itself. You know, once again, as we grow up, We've learned to keep score of things. We've learned baseball scores, keeping the score in basketball, uh, 
keeping the scores in soccer, volleyball, tennis, all the sports. But keeping the score of sins of others. How many of us know someone that may have done something to you, that has done something to you? Or your spouse never forgets the things that you do. And somehow or another, every time there's a disagreement or a misunderstanding or an argument, they seem to always bring back all the little things that you have done wrong or all the little things that didn't set well with them. Always. That's keeping score of sins. That's keeping score of what someone has done. Well, you know, surely we're, in a sense, I'm, not that I ever do that, but if anyone ever did, if there's someone out there that did keep score of others, wouldn't that be to help you to remember so that you don't do that again? Maybe. But if God can forgive us and don't bring up our past, mm -hmm. why shouldn't we? Well, the only way we should not or could not is with the help of the Lord. Okay. And, and that's all that... Um, so you don't, think it it, don't you think it helps you a little bit if you say, well... Oh, no, I won't do that because I didn't. she's going to remind me that I did that before. No, I don't think it helps. I think you're exactly mm -hmm. right. I don't think it helps either. <laughs> you know, it, to me, it's more of a retaliation. It's more of a way of digging at someone. It's more of a way of stepping on you and trying to, trying to make you angry trying to make you upset, want you to, to remember. Yes, we remember. Yes, it's hard. Yes, we said we wouldn't do it again. But then why keep bringing it up? Well, what if it helps by me, not me, and I'm talking about those are people that do that. Um, perhaps it will help by me beating you over the head verbally. Perhaps it will help to relieve the pain that I'm feeling in my heart. Yes? But. It's a panacea. A, a, a fix. A, an aspirin to a wound. An aspirin or a bandage to an hemorrhage. But the best medicine is God. Well, until I get it. Not I, but until mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. out there gets there, it sure does help. Like having an aspirin mm -hmm. when you have a brain but does tumor. It, but does it really help? For the moment. Mm -hmm. It's a quick fix. Yeah, they it's, work. It's it works. A quick you, ain't got a you, you, you might as well go inject heroin or, or something in your arm for a quick fix. And how long does it take care of the problem? That's good, though. That's you know? good. Gonna, you know, well, it, that's it, very good. It, it takes care of the problem. But it sure does feel good for that but, moment. But look at the repercussions of it later. What would they be? Huh? The repercussions of it is now you got an angry husband. Now you're upset. If you're on drugs and stuff, now you got to go and try to get some more. Now you got to go and um, you don't have the money or something. So now you go out and steal it. Okay? You, if you get caught, what's going to happen? You're going to go to jail or you're going to be locked up or you're going to be put in a medical facility. Is that what you really want with your life? No. You know, so is the quick fix that much of a fix when there's going to be repercussions of what's going to happen to you later on in life? You know, you know, it, it, it's hard. It, it's hard to understand. It's hard to phantom. It's hard to, to try to get that across to people. But God forgave us. Jesus said on the cross, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. So Same principle. Are you saying that um, that person who 
continues to do the same thing, does not know what he or she is doing? In most cases, yes. Because they don't know, you may be fixing your pain, but are you putting pain or giving, um, hindering the other from moving and growing? So by you're saying by constantly the reminding them, right. it's bringing them into um, condemnation. condemnation, making them feel bad about yeah. themselves, the, the, making the, them feel that they're low, you're, you're, you're pressing them, them down. You, you, you're making them feel low. You're, you're, you're pushing constantly them pushing them down. down. You're, you're not giving them a chance to flourish. You're not giving them an opportunity <coughs> to blossom. Okay? You know, um, you take a test in school, okay, and the one or the two answers or the three answers that you didn't get right, what do you usually do? Oh, let me go back and see the answers that I got wrong. Let me see where I made my mistake so I can correct that because if that ever comes up again, it's what? <clears throat> you know that. You studied it. You can go ahead and move on. The same principles apply here. Or you can keep score like someone would do, and, and, and this is what the effect would be, kind of like, well, you know you failed that last test, but you know you need to kind of fix up, you know, study hard, because you keep failing the test, and you keep failing over and over again, and you're just no good, and you must just be dumb, and blah, 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 there, blah. There, there you go. Then what are you doing? You're pressing just them you're pressing them down. You're suppressing them. You, you, you're, trying to put, them down. you're trying to put a Band-Aid over a wound that needs stitches. Okay. Okay. So if you need the stitches, get the stitches to get it to heal. Okay. A band-aid is not going to hold it if it's coming out, if the blood is coming out or the gas is that deep. So the band-aid is just <coughs> there for a temporary, for a small cut or a wound, for a small portion of the time. So you're keeping score. Why are you keeping score? All you're doing is keeping score to bring more pain to that person, to suppress them, to keep them down. Let that person go, you know. Um, it, it's just as we've been sitting up here and the last few nights our dog has been barking at 3 o'clock in the morning, continuously. And we have a method that we use that you know, try to get him to stop. But it seems that he's continuing to stop. He'll stop for a while. Right. Then he'll but start then back. he'll start back. Okay? So we're trying to find why he is barking at night. Because as I looked out last night, this morning, there was nothing around him. He's sitting in his doghouse. Okay? And he's just barking. Now, um, He's been, we've been bringing him in at night and letting him be on the porch. So now he's got accustomed to that, okay, and <coughs> not being outside. <laughs> so I think that he's doing it to try to, to make us force him to come inside, okay? But we've got to be able to reach him in a way that he understands. And if we keep if we keep keeping score on all the things that he's doing, you know, how are we going to make him to understand what we're trying to reach him to do and trying to be um, obedient or trying to get him to understand that it it's not right for him to be barking at night. Okay, so. You know, I have a question. You generally do, but go ahead. Okay, the dog's fine. I, I, I whatever, we, I, we'll deal with that. Um, a person. Let's go to people. Okay. If you have a person, say if I was a wife, this would be a scenario. Oh, if I was a husband, and you had a wife that constantly was doing the same thing, and that whatever she was doing, was hurting herself as well as hurting your relationship. As a husband, you say you would not remind her of what she is doing. How would you get her to stop doing what she's doing? 
same principle as how you would get the dog to stop doing what he's doing. But let's say with the people right now. Um, if it's hurting the relationship and hurting her, and hurting her then you have to say something. So, okay. okay. But you're saying it out of love. Okay. Okay. You're saying it. Before. I love you, but if you do it again, I'm going to knock this no, out no, of love. No, no, but, no. But okay. you don't have to put it that way. Let's okay. See. You don't have to put it that way. You know, there's another way that we can handle this. There's another way that we can try to make this relationship work. Okay. Come on, let's give it a try. Let's try it another way instead of the way that you've been doing it. And the way that you would suggest, where would you get that weight from? Well, you know, you sit there and discuss things. You sit so there just by discussing and, it, you well, get it? Well, it, 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 you might. You, you never know. Who mm. knows? The, or who is the way? There's only one. And who is that one? You and mm. I? Discussing or who? Mm. Who is you, the way? The you, truth you, and the lie. Okay. And, and I have to say no more because you just said it. You know, even they don't we, know what they know. Is, <laughs> all the way, the truth, and the light mm -hmm. is. If you don't know by now, you'll never, never know. You're not taking but, it for granted. No, I'm not taking it for granted, but of course, God is the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. All okay. the same. All, all the same. One. All in one, right. And so we would that ask is the way. God. You're going to ask God. We would earnestly continue to ask. Not right. just one time. Not just one time. While you were asleep and our dog was barking, I was up, didn't want to bother you as a priest of my own. But I was, well, you probably were a little bit awake, but not awake enough to, to come and actually attend to the doggy. No, not, not so. You probably knew okay. I was up. I, I knew you was up. So you defaulted I, well, no, and gave No, me no, I didn't default. Um, you forget the fact that, no, I'm not even going to say you forget, but I was up earlier and attended to him. Well, I didn't know that. Okay, see, was I you were asleep, okay, and he was doing it early. And he was doing it early. Oh, okay. Okay, well, so, you know, we kind of have our time that um, <coughs> we attended to him, okay, so, you know. But anyway, you know. we would consult the way right. to find out yeah, the, the way. way. And so I sat. And I began to pray. Rather than try to deal with it my way, I consulted the way. Okay. But I had to first get quiet because what we tend to want to deal with something out of anger. We want to deal with something um, exactly where our spirit is disturbed. And so I got I sat, and it took me a bit. And as I sat, and my spirit began to get quiet to reconnect with the grace of spirit which is God, he gave me an answer. Okay. And he told me to try this, a particular thing, which we will discuss mm -hmm. later. It um, doesn't matter what it is for the listeners. Um, we will try that with him. And so my point is, rather than to remind the dog, you are such a bad dog. We have brought you this and we have brought you that and we have have taken you in and we have brought you and we've walked you and, and now you're acting out. You're such a bad dog. Or reminding the wife, you are so bad. Remember so and so you did this and keep the score and do that. Rather than doing that, you are suggesting that what we do is ask the way. Lord, what is the way to deal with this issue? Amen. Nothing else needs to be said on that. You know, and um, as yourself sat and prayed, I also got quiet. So did he give we, you some things that were not well, that way? Yeah, we, we give you some ideas. So you know, um, <coughs> <coughs> love doesn't keep score of the sins of others, and I know a lot of us have been hurt. A lot of us have done things that we're not uh, proud of towards others. I know that but, I have. But are we going to allow that to hinder us 
for what God has for us? Are we going to allow that to, to hold us back? Not allow God to give us what God has planned for us? We have to stop reminding people of what they did wrong. What we did wrong. We got to be able to let it go. We got to be able to allow the Spirit of God <coughs> in our heart. We have to be able to allow the Holy Spirit to but we need to ask God how can we stop keeping score how can we move on from our past of what has happened to us you know um, I know a lot of us are dealing with things that we've done in the past I've got um, I've got a couple of guys who referee for me that they had some trouble in the past and they have not been able to get cleared on certain organizations to do referee certain tournaments but yet I don't let that hinder them I give them games that they can work, places that they can go, until we get that clear. Um, all of them have been cleared through um, the Jennifer Humphrey Act, okay, so they can do the high school stuff, okay. They got cleared through that, but there are certain little organizations that um, they have not been cleared through, and each organization has their own way of doing background checks on you and stuff like that. So, you know, um, I'm, I've been trying to push that if you get cleared through the high school side and the college side of it, then you should be cleared through all of the organizations. But, you know, that's another battle that, that has to be won. Or and I guess the principle that I'm saying, you know, to, in, in relation to your basketball, um, to bring it to a higher level or to a level of all of our listeners, some that don't play basketball or whatever, right. if you're clear through God, then you're clear throughout all eternity. And so, I, and that's and that's my point. However, in order to deal with someone who has an issue that keeps repeating the same offense. The only way that we can really deal with them is by, is by the way. And not our way, but by no. the no way. way. Capital T-H-E, capital W-A-Y. And the only way that we know what the way is, is to be connected to the way. The way. To be connected to the true vine. For he is the true vine, and his father is the husbandman. And every branch that abides in, in him, it shall remain. But every branch that is not in him shall be cast away. So the bottom line is, we will only have a quick fix on any situation until we truly allow the Holy Spirit to connect us to the true vine, which is Jesus. Amen. So what, you know, it, it, it's funny though, we always get back to the same point. Um, we're trying to fix this, and we're trying to fix that. I don't care what it is. Um, we're trying to fix this, we're trying to fix that. It seems like the small things, we think we got it, and that's the ones that we don't really have. The ones we don't we really only want to give God the things that we think are big. But the Bible says, in all thy ways, what? Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And so, the, what we're saying today, even though we've been talking on love and various aspects of love and various situations, is it's time to get back to God. It's time to get back to God in everything that we do. Lord, 
I realize that of myself, I can nada. do nada. Without you. I know that I may have this talent, but without you telling me the way, mm. I can do nothing. I can do nothing. And, and, and Reverend Sandy, you are so, so right, you know. And so are you, my darling husband. Yeah. Well, thank you, but we cannot do it without God. We can. Because he is the only way. He is the way. <coughs> <laughs> and no matter what you may think you can do are you have you been told to do it could have spirit could have told you the, the spirit could have what spirit you got it okay so you know um, there's the way and the only way the, the way, way. Is the way to fix our problems, and you know, I know we alluded to it almost every every Sunday we've been talking about love. But God has a way of getting your attention. God has a way of letting you know whether you're on the right track or not. You know, and you it's know, funny how He'll use something as simple as a dog. The dog, yeah. yeah. You know, isn't that something? It, 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 no, it's 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 just so unbelievable. You know that he uses us, animals, signs, um, even a plant, even a splash of water. You know, to to get our attention. So I would say know? to use the simple mm -hmm. things to confound the wise. Yeah. So, teaches you know, a lesson. He teaches us a lesson, you know. Um, so, love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. I know we talked about that for a while. Um, we're, we're going to now talk about love doesn't rabble when others gravel. Okay. So love doesn't bark. When <laughs> love doesn't bark, doesn't bark when, back. when another person doesn't bark back. Love doesn't bark, bark back, back when another person, person barks. Bark. That's a good way yeah. of saying it. Um, that's good. Love doesn't grab gravel when others gravel. And, you know, as we're talking, and we won't go to the animals or anything like that, but, you know, um, people argue, people get mad at you. People get upset with you. You know, um, they're going to bark at you. They're trying to get something out of the way because... They felt you didn't do something that they felt was right. And we tend to have the situation escalate because they're arguing with you. Now you're going to start arguing back at them. And, and now it escalates into something. We, we we almost had a fight last night in the gym. Oh. Yeah. Um, and this was my first time in the gym. So I was sitting upstairs. Nobody <coughs> nobody knew who I was. <laughs> nobody knew that I was there to ref game. So I was watching the two young officials out on the floor, watching them. And this guy says something, and this other guy says something, and they, they got into a confrontation where they had to escort them out. You know, and perfect what we're saying. Love doesn't rival when others grab it. No matter who was right or wrong there, okay, it could have blew up into something where other people got involved. Because now you got people coming from this way, you got people coming from this way, you know, and you got an argument going on, and the argument got heated, you know. It finally de-escalated when they, they escorted them out, okay, out of the gym, and they got back to doing what they were doing. And, um, but, you know, as many of us have gotten upset over things, how many of us have gotten upset because somebody may have 
cut in front of you on the highway. And you, blah, 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 blah. You know, how many of you uh, gotten upset on the job? So one minute. One minute? How many of no, you? No, you don't. You got Sorry. more than one minute. Sorry. Yeah. How many of you gotten upset <coughs> on the job uh, because the boss wants you to do something or wanted you to do it this way, but you felt it was easier to do it that way and it might not have been done right and you got into a confrontation or a disagreement with your supervisor. You know, um, how many of you work with special aid kids that are sometimes out of control or sometimes are not there, you know. You know, we deal in, in so many different things during the course of our lives, you know. We try to rationalize or we try to do it the humanistic way, okay? And we forget about what that small voice in the back of our head is telling us, you know, you don't have to do it that way. Sometimes, can we just sit here and listen and then walk away? You know. You think the scripture the comes at play with those situations? And you're, we wrestle not against mm -hmm. flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness, mm -hmm. principalities and powers in high places. Think that has anything to do with what you're saying? Very much so. Very much so. What, is, what do you think it has to do with it? In what way? So is well, it that person that's doing it, or is there a spirit behind that person? There, there, there's a spirit behind it. So then are yeah. we going to use human means, a human, humanistic means, a baseball bat, slap him upside the head, uh, uh, give the robber back, bark, him, bark back with him, they cuss you, you cuss them back, you're, you're, to use your term, humanistic means, I call it fleshly means, Okay. Um, uh, are we going to, uh, they get mad at you, you get mad with them, you get an eye for an eye, two mm -hmm. for a tooth, a bat for a bat, a, a bump upside the head for a bump upside the or are we going to reconnect, if we lost for a moment, reconnect back with our Father, the way that he may show us the way to deal with that situation? What's the answer? The answer is, is, is a simple answer. And that is? The simple answer is we need to connect to our Father, okay, to show us the way. The that, way. I, I said the yeah, way. The, the way. way. To handle that particular situation that you're in, you know. Um, every situation is different. No formula here. You, you know. Um, Two people with a bat. <laughs> that <Better> run. <laughs> you know, um, all you're gonna do is get lumps. After the lumps, what are you saying? Oh, I shouldn't have done it. That's too late. You know, um, I I can remember as a child growing up. Growing up as a child, if you and I had a disagreement or we had an argument in the park. We might have thought about it, you know, but when it was over, you know, we shaking hands and we had <laughs> friends, you know, and it was over and done with. Now, it's a little different. Now people are taking knives, guns, or other means to harm somebody, to take somebody out, you know. Um, not right. You know, there are other ways, there's only the way, the way to handle it. And we have to, we have to be in the right mindset. We have to be able to 
sit back, wait a minute. I'm not right here. Let Recognize that you through, disconnected. Then you disconnected. Through anger. And through, through anger. Frustration. Or you know, and, and anger is just a way of Satan getting to you. Allowing Spirit. Satan. The spirits, whatever you want to call it's it. It's a spirit. It, it's a spirit. Well, whatever right. you want to call it, it's a spirit. It's a spirit, it's a spirit but it's the flesh, flesh and blood. blood. But right then and there is allowing Satan to get yes. to you. Okay? <laughs> allowing Satan to manipulate you into doing something that may cause you havoc for the rest of your life. Okay? The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. not. So, if a portal has been opened through an offense by someone of anger, and that spirit of anger rises up, and it is, it is, but the Bible says, though it's there, I don't have to act upon it. Take your moment, step back, and reconnect with God. Yeah. And then, find from the Lord what is the, the way, way, and then go forth. Yeah. And couldn't have put it any better way than stepping back and allowing the Holy Spirit to regain your composure. So I can, so sorry, not I, so God can show you the best way and the way to handle that particular situation. And that's the only way is the way that's going to be effective. That's going to be effective. Truly effective and bring mm -hmm. deliverance and not a quick fix. And not a quick fix. You won't need the stitches. You won't need the band-aid. You won't need the the cocaine or the heroin or the liquor or the aspirin. Because God can fix it in the snap of the minute, in the snap of your finger. But you got to allow him to guide you. You have to allow him to guide you. Okay. And um, well, I know say about that time. A little bit of announcement <clears throat> that you are welcome to tweet us at hashtag LMI Radio. That's hashtag LMI Radio. Or you can even, in the last few minutes, we may even take a call if you wanted to call us. We only have how many minutes? minutes? Four? Three. Well, we can take a call if you want to say praise the Lord or just something. Uh, we'll take a call. And what's the number? 850-417-7041. Say it again. 850-417-7041. And we also want to say that, you know, if you've enjoyed, I know you have these, pro these broadcasts, if you've enjoyed the ministry of LMI International, feel free to... Go to our, our website and send us a donation. We, no amount is too big. <laughs> 9.7.2 million and no amount is too small. too small. We need you and you need us. We need each other. Thank you for those announcements. And I will make another announcement. Um, you can call in to say happy birthday, happy belated birthday. To Reverend Sandy, yesterday was her birthday. She turned very young, another Earth year. Earth year. And, um, 62. Okay, so she told you. So um, we thank you for 62 years of being here on Earth. I thank you for the 11 years that you have given me in wow. our marriage 11. Wow. No, 2000. Shaggy, you don't even know what we're going to do. 2003. That's okay. Love doesn't keep score. I forgive you. Yeah, good, good. Because I know it was 2003. <laughs> you kept saying 2006. But I had to show you that you were wrong. But that's okay. Because we're not keeping score. Meet but. me every Saturday at 11 a.m. And you can mm -hmm. say happy birthday anytime to me then. Don't 11 a.m. on Saturday. Don't forget that. Get healthy with Sandy. Get healthy with Sandy at 11 a.m. every Saturday. We also have some other announcements that we will be making later on, and um, those will be coming forthwith at Bishop Scott Report. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we thank you for joining us. We thank you for being with us. God bless you all.
for spending the time with us this morning. We hope that um, whatever we said and the words that we have spoken, we hope that you have taken them in and that you allow the Holy Spirit and allow God to help you maneuver through whatever crisis or whatever trials and tribulations that you're going through. Allow God, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and to walk with you. God bless you and have a great week. Pensacola, we will be hearing from our pre life Bishop Joseph Scott at On the Hour from Pensacola, Sunday morning service. Good morning, and we're signing out. Pensacola, it is yours.